Well, what do you think? Do you think that there was a, the conventional uh, concept of God, or do you think it just happened? Well, that's not the full range of possibilities. No, that's true. <laughs> I mean, we could have come here from somewhere else. Oh, uh, that, that's also possible, but... But, uh, well, but then, what, where did we come from before that? Uh, absolutely. So you want to watch out for the infinite regress. That, well, that's what's your personal opinion? You know, put you on I'm, the spot I'm, a little I'm bit. I'm a scientist. So I say I go where the evidence goes, mm -hmm. not what I personally I would well, like what to What is the evidence I, as you interpret it? I would love to believe. Your theory. I would love to believe that there was a God who made us, who's looking out for us. And loves us. Loves us. We need takes love. Takes care of us. And... Make because we're because, guides us and because keeps we're in us such a mess. We're doing That's things so wrong. Then we would be relieved of the responsibility of taking care of ourselves. The voice would come from up above and, and say, say, "Don't stop pollute the atmosphere. Stop the chlorofluorocarbons." Right. Weapons. That's right. But that does not seem to be the case. We have to solve our own problems. We have to solve our own problems. Now, on the question of the origin of life, uh, there's been some very interesting progress made uh, on the early Earth. There are two different ways in which the stuff of life, the, the molecules that lead to life, are made. One, it seems very clear, it was made in the primitive atmosphere, lightning, ultraviolet light falling on the Earth, that kind of stuff. And the other way is, it fell from the skies. Because at the time of the origin of the Earth, comets, a lot of debris was being swept up. The, the solar system was a lot, uh, a lot more traffic in it than there is now. And a lot of that debris, we know from the uh, exploration of Halley's Comet, for example, comets are very rich in organic matter. So the stuff of life was falling on the earth. Now, is that the hand of God or not? Well, if you believe in God, God established the, the physical laws of the universe. And chemistry is a consequence of physics, so all those molecules that led to life were made by, by God. It's possible to believe that. I, I'm not opposed to that idea. But I just say there is no evidence for it. And where there's no evidence, I say keep an open mind. Don't commit yourself in the absence of compelling evidence. Well, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I, I agree with you that we, we're going to have to solve these problems uh, ourselves uh, that, we, that we have today. And, and, and in historical religions, uh, there are many wonderful, fine teachings, but none of them, uh, they're all ancient uh, by today's standard pre-industrial revolution. And uh, they didn't deal with the, the problems that we had today because when Christ and Muhammad and the, and the other prophets uh, were alive, they didn't have nuclear weapons. There was no problem with overpopulation or environmental problems, so they weren't even mentioned in the commandments and the Koran and, uh, and so forth. Yep. Carl, do we have uh, reason to be hopeful about the future, and what can we do to, to have a hopeful future? Well, I think there's a broad range of, of things that the average person uh, can do, especially in a democracy where, you know, at least in principle, the people control what the government does. Uh, government's supposed to be working for the people, not the other way around. Also on a planet where things are moving very much more towards the idea that the people are, are in control. The Soviet Union, fantastic changes are happening there. Not, not yet all the way. It's not a multi-party system. There's a lot of, a lot of things that that they don't have, but the amount of progress there is absolutely enormous. Those are some signs of, of, of hope. Now, we talked before about, uh, about writing to members of Congress and, uh, and visiting members of Congress, mm -hmm. writing letters to newspapers, uh, uh, television stations when they do a program that seems right. All of that is a useful application of the citizens' democratic uh, prerogatives and has some leverage. It doesn't have a huge amount of leverage in my my personal opinion, because uh, there are a lot of other factors. Uh, uh, there's a concentration of uh, control of the news media in the hands of the wealthy. The wealthy have a particular perspective. Yeah, I haven't seen any poor people owning newspapers or television networks lately. Well, uh, uh, that's a good point, and, and also it doesn't always happen. I mean, I, Besides, if they did own them, they wouldn't be poor for very long. <laughs> yes. Um, so so that's, that's one, one worry. Another worry is that... Uh, that great wealth has a lot of leverage in a lot of different ways. And so uh, uh, rich people have a lot more control over what gets talked about, what gets seen, which opinions are acceptable and permissible than do poor people. Uh, so just writing letters to, to newspapers or to members of Congress isn't going to do a whole lot. Voting does a whole lot more. Because the one thing that members of Congress and uh, members of the executive branch, I mean the elected members of the executive branch, president and vice president, are very interested in is getting reelected. 
-hmm. And uh, if it were possible for people to clear away the electoral smokescreen, the stuff that's, that's intended to cloud your mind, the stuff that's intended to, uh, to uh, make you look at, uh, at subsidiary issues and not the fundamental issues, uh, if people can do that, if they can learn to think straight, uh, then they have an enormous uh, leverage, an enormous amount of control. So, I mean, in the previous administration, we, uh, we had a president that thought it was, it was good enough to label a, uh, a very destabilizing, fundamentally first-strike weapon, the MX, as peacekeeper. And as long as we called it peacekeeper, <laughs> then, then <laughs> the eyes close and everybody will be for it by naming it. Uh, we, uh, we had an administration in which a transparent hoax, the Strategic Defense Initiative, uh, Star Wars, intended, so we were told, to protect the civilian population, got enormous support. Because the argument was, uh, listen, uh, do you realize that we have no defense against the I Soviet know, the shield, the commercial That's with right. a little don't shield. You, don't you want, want some protection? Of course. And of course people, people went for that because the right questions weren't asked. And television, by the way, was full of... Uh, of uh, graphics showing uh, four Soviet warheads in a spiffy U.S. battle station going zip, 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 zip. And the warheads... Like an electronic game, you exactly, know, at the airport. Exactly. And the warheads went away, and that's what we were going to do <laughs> until we could protect the United Man. States. It was not the asking of hard questions. So the, the next step, and this is something Thomas Jefferson repeatedly stressed, is that if you want to exercise your democratic privileges and powers... You have to understand the situation, and you have to understand it in a fairly deep way. You have to get beyond the rhetoric that politicians necessarily spread in order to calm everybody and, uh, and to get reelected. So a, an educated populace is absolutely essential. What people can do is to learn the actual facts, to make sure that both sides of the issues are expressed and that they... Uh, there's nothing, by the way, in these issues that the average person can't understand. The average person is plenty smart enough to understand these issues, and most of those cases, almost all of them, which the government said, if you have the facts we have, then you'd reach a different conclusion, that turns out to be bunk. Beyond that, there are a lot of other things people can do. They can demonstrate. They can make mass rallies. There is an American tradition of civil, nonviolent civil disobedience. It worked, well, too. It certainly worked. For, it helped for do away with, uh, with segregation, and it helped do away with the Vietnam War. That's right. And uh, it seems to me that is very American. We ought to be marching for the environment. We have and marching absolutely. continue to those courageous souls that have marched against nuclear testing and uh, against SDI. Absolutely. And absolutely. So, for example... We've got to take our future into our own hands. Absolutely agree. Now, let me say another couple of words on... Uh, Oh, let me say one thing. Uh, for example, th this next uh, April, I think, there's going to be uh, uh, massive demonstrations at the Nevada nuclear test site, Great. in which uh, my wife, Andrianne, and I have gone there, have been arrested before in nonviolent civil disobedience, mm -hmm. because there the Soviets had stopped testing. They say, you guys stop testing, and we dismissed it. We refused to do it for a year and a half. They gave us, to, and they've said, you stop testing, we'll stop testing. Testing is the main driver that drives the nuclear arms race. If you can't blow up nuclear weapons, you can't make the next generation of weapons. Uh, I'm in favor of the next generation of people. <laughs> now, I want to say there is a historical perspective which suggests as bad as our problems are, the nuclear arms race, the uh, environmental issues, as bad as all that is, there is some reason for hope. There was once slavery on the planet. It is largely gone. There was once human sacrifice. There was once the divine right of kings. There was lots of stuff that today Depression we consider... Oppression of women. Absolutely. I'm sorry I didn't, I didn't say that. All of that is changing. And we can change these issues too because our lives depend on it. We're smart enough, we're dedicated enough to do it, but not by sitting on our duffs. We have to really work. Take action. Take okay, action. well, Carl, we're out of time. It was a real pleasure to have you here. Same here.